This is NHTV2, North Haven Government Television, a service of North Haven Community Television. The following program is brought to you through the support of the town of North Haven. Good evening, I'm Mike Frieda, North Haven's first selectman, and welcome to the special North Haven Board of Selectmen meeting. I'm joined by our second selectman, Mr. Bill Piper, and our third select woman, Ms. Sally Buemi. Thank you for joining us. So ladies and gentlemen, the purpose of this meeting is to review and warn and call a town meeting on June 25th. There'll be a number of items on this agenda, but before we get started on that, I'd like to ask if there's any public comment to the agenda. Caldwell. I just have a quick question about, um, I know the public meeting has multiple different things that you're bringing to the town meeting, and one being the addition of um, SRO officers, which has an impact on the schools and the budget um, for town. And I'm just wondering why it's being done at a town meeting versus for that particular item specifically, as opposed to a referendum, because that decision is going to have impl um, implications for many people in town. And town meetings, especially one that's only being announced less than, what, a week ahead of time, it's going to be difficult for t people of the town who are concerned to have input and to be able to weigh in on this. Well, several reasons. We want to get this <coughs> implemented by the start of the school year. Number one. Number two, uh, by town charter, the town meeting can vote on this, so it's in compliance with the town charter. Number three, it's been addressed, thoroughly vetted with the Board of Education, many of the PTAs, the superintendent. Uh, we've been working on this. Uh, we just finalized it, actually, but in concept, uh, it's been discussed at recent Board of Education meetings. So um, I think to putting, put, putting this to a referendum would delay the, pro the process dramatically. However, the second phase of my plan on the infrastructure upgrades, which would probably require a bonding resolution, that would go to a referendum. Well, here's the thing. Um, I would like to know what exactly, in terms of you say it's fully been fully vetted, did the Board of Ed, doesn't look like they had a long discussion about research, about the impact of having a police presence in schools, about the impact of having um, police involved, uh, or police approach um, addressing students um, discipline or things in school versus a mental health approach I've seen many many times where you're working with a student with significant behavioral or emotional issues and you're trying to de-escalate and when a it becomes more of a um, police come in they're using more of a law enforcement approach and the situation becomes worse so I, I think that you know instead of rushing to make such a big decision um, that, again, can have an implication on kids and their well-being, that there should be a, a really good review of the research um, to determine whether this is something that's actually going to be beneficial for our kids or, or detrimental. And so... How could it be detrimental? Because you end up with kids who have behavioral programs that you, when you use a law enforcement approach, they spiral. And if one of the things that has gone on with a lot of discussions around these school shootings is that one of the main problems are mental health, the mental health of, of these young boys. And one of the things that can happen is you throw them into that law enforcement system, it is just going to propel them into that, um, along that um, trajectory because it, it's a very different approach than someone who's working on de-escalation, on mental health, um, on trying to teach kids the proper way to deal with their anger and aggression. And so I, I would just hope that the, that the Board of Ed and the um, Board of Selectmen would A, open up this um, big decision to members of the town so that they can do their research and decide whether that's something they really want in their schools and they want their budgetary funds to go to or whether we should be looking at other options. And, well, and to you, rush it through well, just seems like a decision is being made without being fully vetted. As we just saw happened, all of that, what happened with the fields was, was uh, around people really feeling like they didn't have input into a very big decision 
that they were emotionally very attached to. And I would hate to see that happen again, but I can see it happening again because you're going to have people on both sides of this argument who are going to be worried about having armed police officers in their schools. And I just think that for this particular issue, not for the rest of it, it there should be more notification, people should be more aware of it, and it should go out to a referendum where the town gets to decide whether this is really a good move for the town. There's already one in the high school. So what's the, what's the situation there? I mean, that's where you're most likely gonna have the mental health problems. Is when well, they, they, they start in the elementary schools, and you but know. But again, let's let's just talk about the current situation. I so do you've think had, there, you've had problems with the officer in the high school. I do think there are times that that are. Do you are, have any specific incidents? I instances? don't have any specific See, incidents. So you know that's where that's where again, if you look at where, you know, where there have been a lot of shootings and incidents of shootings, it's been at the high school level. And that officer's Could, in the middle school too. So, he so goes we're back doing and forth is extending the middle this we're to just the other extending. School. Well, so here's the thing. Um, the fact that there is an officer in the high school, I don't have a specific incident. I can say that I have seen personally where kids' behaviors have been handled from a more consequence um, law enforcement approach, and it doesn't necessarily help them to improve their behavior or have better outcomes. And that's really what we want. We want the students in North Haven to have better outcomes. Again, maybe some research should be done into you know, what is working, what is not working, but to extend well, it all. it worked in the high school? I, I don't have that information. What I'm saying right now is I think we need that information. And it hasn't disrupted. It hasn't we don't know that. Do you have the data? You're asking well, me if I'm I have the asking, data. I don't. Yeah, I, I don't. have the data. There. Do you have any incidents that's happened in the high school? Well, that, because I, that tells me that nothing's that doesn't happened tell you and anything. it's actually worked fine. No, actually it doesn't. Because well, you don't well, have the, know. have you asked every parent in North Haven if they've had a problem? Yeah. Well, I, well, I'll tell you, I've, I've talked to teachers and PTAs and administrators and everybody wants us to move forward with this program. Well. I, I personally would like to see that. I don't know that for sure. You're just telling me you talk to people. That's anecdotal. Which school I mean, do you teach in? I or worked phrases for 10 years. And prior to you that, I worked in. You don't oh, teach, you're not in our school system right now. Though. I'm not in North Haven, no. Okay. But I've worked in schools my whole So you really don't know career. how it's worked in the high school here because you're not even in that school. Well, I, neither do you. So well, that, that's well, not again, the point. I, I that's anecdotally not the point. From, you know, my, you know, from kids being in the school, from them being there, that we've not had a problem. Plenty of parents want it extended to the middle school and, and many to parents protect their don't. I know par many parents who don't want. So they really don't want their children protected. Then no, that has nothing system. to do with it. That's that's. So you're twisting. looking to protect, you know, protect them against something that hasn't happened at the high school that that you know we're trying to protect on a no, different level. No, actually, than the other no, that's inaccurate. Well, we appreciate your opinion, Jenny, but we disagree with you. I'm sorry. We're moving I, forward with this. That. We're moving forward with this, and we're going to be presenting it to a town meeting now. Now at the town meeting, if people. Can they ask to require to have it go to a referendum? Well, I mean, they could stand up Is that up a possibility? They can vote to ask to go to a referendum? They, they could, yes, okay. they could. All right, well, that's so, good to know. Thank okay. You. Now, we're trying, to, I, I, we're trying to do something good here and protect the students, and it's like I just sometimes don't understand it, folks. I mean, we're trying to protect the parents and the children and moving forward. We've talked to parents, administrators, PTAs. I've done it personally. I, I was with a PTA today. I, I sometimes just don't understand it, but I appreciate the different points of view, but we feel strongly we have to move forward with this. So. And I, I just want to be clear, because I don't appreciate the implication that I don't want kids, to have kids be safe. Mm. I am more concerned about kids, about the impact being negative, and I'm not saying a hundred percent it should be it will be but I think we need to do some research because I have I am concerned about the impact on kids you have your opinion that it might be safer I have my opinion that it may be less safe so don't imply that I'm trying to do something that's less safe for children all I'm saying is that I think that we should slow down and look at what research shows over time, not necessarily our particular high school, but what research shows about what makes, wait, what makes kids safer, and then let's do that as opposed to just jumping into something and only giving a week's time for people who in the town who are concerned to get to a meeting that is at a very specific time. Well, I've been, That's talk it. I've been talking about this for months in public meetings I, about advertising the fact we're doing this at a town meeting. So uh, we're going to be working with the Board of Education to ensure that people are notified to come out to the town meeting. I think that uh, there should be a sense of urgency on this issue in terms of uh, getting an added layer of protection in the schools. And I'm on a mission, ladies and gentlemen. On top of that, I said at the last meeting, the next step is to, and I already have the plan, it's been presented to me by the Board of Education on how to upgrade 
to, to ensure that there's a robust level of security in all of the elementary schools and even enhance the security at the high school. This is something I think is very important for the citizens, the parents and grandparents who have children in our school systems. Okay, so yeah, thank you I, very I much. I have a, a lot of comments on the SRO program, both um, from a procedural budgetary standpoint as well as a policy standpoint, but we're on number one yes. public comment and Ms. Caldwell made her public comment. I'll reserve my uh, issues with, with the program when we get to that point in the agenda. All right, so I think now at this point, we have to do some amendments. Amendments, thank you. I, I'd like to um, make a motion that we uh, amend item nine on the agenda. Uh, and here we're, we're simply, uh, there was a typographical error where we are replacing the phrase to the capital account of the fiscal year 1819 budget. We are going to amend and replace that phrase with from the unappropriated fund balance. So I would like to make a motion that item nine um, of the agenda be amended accordingly. I'll, I'll second that. Okay, so we have a, a motion and a second. Any other discussions on that amendment? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, something uh, somewhere in item number 10, um, also to change uh, from to the capital account of fiscal year 18, uh, 19 budget amend to replace with from the unappropriated fund, or unappropriated fund balance. I'll second the motion for that amendment. All right, so we have a motion on uh, to amend, a second, any other discussions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then the final amendment is to um, include or insert an item 11.A between item 11 and 12 on the agendas. Um, by adding the following resolution for the agenda. Resolve to recommend that the town meeting adopt an ordinance at chapter 163 of the ordinances of the town of North Haven to establish the North Haven Police Public School Security Supernumerary Program, public school supernumerary, to protect the health, safety, and welfare of students enrolled at the public schools in the town of North Haven. So I will move that that resolution be added or inserted as 11.A. I'll second that. <clears throat> all right, so we have uh, a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so I'm gonna ask Bill and Sally to read each of the next series of items. Uh, I can do two. Okay. Uh, item two on the agenda, call for a public hearing to be held on Monday, June 25th, 2018 at 6.45 p.m. in the auditorium of the North Haven High School, 221 Elm Street, North Haven, Connecticut, concerning programs to be submitted for approval under the Connecticut Neighborhood Assistance Act. The town has received the following two applications, which are both on file in the office of Michael J. Frieda, First Selectman, Memorial Town Hall, 18 Church Street, North Haven, Connecticut. A, the Moriarty Hall Energy Conservation Improvements Program submitted by Landcraft Fife and Drum Corps. And B, the Churches of North Haven Food Pantry Program submitted by the North Haven Congregational Church. I believe we have this public hearing every, every year, every so year. I yeah. will move for the call of this public hearing is read. I'll second that. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is to consider and vote upon whether to recommend that the town meeting adopt amendments to the Code of Ethics in Chapter 30 of the Ordinances of the Town of North Haven. Well, so, um, we haven't done uh, the res we're, okay. we're considering it right. first, then we're going to do the resolution. Okay. So, uh, if I may, I, uh, why don't we uh, uh, have Attorney Coppola explain the reason for the changes to the Code of Ethics? So the proposed amendments actually came from the board. Uh, the, the most critical to them is that they would like to have uh, only quarterly meetings and then, of course, meet should they receive a complaint. 
Um, so there is that significant change. And then the other changes that were proposed, and, and the board does have red line document reflecting the changes. Um, the, the other changes are primarily more of a housekeeping sort of nature. Um, they did, I do want to make you aware though that they did propose a couple of additional amendments that I did not include because I did not think that they were legally appropriate to do so. Um, they proposed uh, that in the prohibited representation section of the code, which is at page five, section eight, that in the second paragraph, that the language lawyers with the town attorney's firm be deleted um, so that it would eliminate uh, the, the town attorneys from being subject to that prohibited representation clause. Um, I did not think that that was appropriate. Certainly, I did not feel coming, <laughs> comfortable coming before you and pursuing that. Um, the, other, the other item that, that I was concerned about, <laughs> well, well, one would question that, right? Um, and then the other, the other uh, issue, too, is um, they were seeking to limit the ability to seek an advisory opinion to people that are subject to the code only. Um, and I thought that that was inappropriate from a due process standpoint. I think that, you know, that there are um, oftentimes uh, certainly residents of the town who might want to pursue an advisory opinion, an interpretation of the code, who do not serve on a particular board or commission and then are not subject to the code. Um, so I did not include that. I just wanted to, to make you aware of those those two items that were requested. I thought that there was a legal problem with doing that. I have never seen um, the advisory opinion piece be limited to people only subject to the code. I mean, the applicability is really covered in 30-2, limiting it to officials, employees, elected or appointed. They wanted. What did they want to do? To that? They wanted they wanted it to be that only uh, individuals who are subject to the code could seek an advisory opinion. Oh, oh no, no. And I, I mean, that's okay. really, I think, inappropriate. So that's, it's not an applicability issue. No. It's a complainant. Exactly. And isn't there a provision on complainants? Um, what? Well, I mean, certainly the advisory opinion. Um, those portions of the code that deal with advisory opinions right. certainly reflect that somebody who is not subject to the code could pursue an advisory opinion and th again that's appropriate given I mean I've I've looked reviewed a number of codes of ethics through the years and um, I've never seen that restriction that that Avenue only be available to people who are subject to the code And the other red line changes were initiated by uh, you? Also by the board. Oh, by the board. Yeah. Okay. I thought you said you had done some clarification redlining. N well, I, I put I put their proposed changes oh, okay. into the document via red line so that you could see specifically okay. what was being changed. Yeah. Any other questions? Bill, anything on that? The, the, um, the um, under under Section Eight, they're prohibited representation. Mm -hmm. uh, so even though it's not red line, lawyers with the town's attorney's firm will will be taken out. No, it will okay. not be. Uh, will not it be. will remain as is. Yeah. That is a that is a relatively common right. That's provision. something that I, I they. I just missed your point earlier about. That's something they wanted. Oh, that, they, uh, they wanted to eliminate it for some reason. Oh, they did. It oh, I, I misunderstood. It certainly that. did not come at the request of your council. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's just make that point. Um, but. But they're in agreement now. Not yourself. Yeah. You don't want to do that. No. <laughs> I, I misunderstood. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I, all, I, all the changes yeah. are in red line, then that yes. we that we're actually approving. Sorry. Yes. Which I've looked at. Well, I I reviewed all of the amendments to the to the code, highlighted, and of course the major procedural change is the number of meetings, which was initiated by 
the board itself, so they probably know best the number of meetings that are required for them to effectively carry out their duties as Board of Ethics members. So all of the other matters I either understood or were explained. So um, going to number four, can I make the motion resolve to recommend that the town meeting adopt amendments to the Code of Ethics at Chapter 30 of the ordinances of the town of North Haven? I'll, I'll second that. All right, motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, next item. That's me. Uh, number five, uh, to consider and vote upon whether to recommend that the town meeting adopt an ordinance prohibiting wastes generated from gas and oil drilling and extraction activities, hydraulic fracturing waste, at Chapter 130 of the Ordinances of the Town of North Haven to prohibit the use, storage, disposal, sale, acquisition, transfer, handling, treatment, and or processing of waste from natural gas or oil extraction within the town of North Haven as set forth therein to protect the health, safety, welfare, and property of the public. So I didn't get a chance to look at this ahead of time because I just got this. So um, this, this essentially anti-fracking ordinance, and that's a bit crude to call it that. We'll, we'll call it a hydraulic <laughs> fracturing waste band. Okay, we'll be a little more technical about it. Um, it's pretty typical of uh, what municipalities have across the state, if they have um, such an ordinance um, at this point. I do wanna point something out to you. Um, and, and I know there's been a lot, of a lot of activity by municipalities in this area. So DEEP is, is currently studying it. And it, I would expect um, that similar to what we've seen, and we're gonna talk in a minute about the uh, proposed IDDE ordinance, I would expect that what we're gonna see is that they probably will make some, some recommendations in terms of a model ordinance to the municipalities. Um, now that has not been something that has been uh, specifically discussed in terms of content from anything that I've seen, um, but uh, certainly, you know, I do pay close attention uh, to what the legislature is doing and to what uh, the various departments are doing in terms of uh, things that might impact what we're doing locally as far as regulations and ordinances. And so I do have my eye on it. You know, if they do uh, pass something that results in us needing to make amendments to this ordinance, um, certainly, you know, I will be before you again uh, to make a recommendation about proposed amendments. Um, and if you have any specific questions, again, I know that there are some nearby communities that have recently passed ordinances of similar content. Yeah, Hamden um, did, upon. I think, a month ago Ham or so. Hamden did. Uh, town of Guilford has as well, um, relatively recently. Of course, this is the byproduct of having Jennifer in uh, from the organization. She actually presented to us last year at a mayor's meeting, and so we want to bring this forward. A lot of residents have asked about this. Were, were we on it? Were we considering it? And this is why we're bringing it to a town meeting. Mary White will be happy. <laughs> My question was about the 130-7 um, um, on transportation. So, um, so it would be a stretch for us to ban transportation of, of these waste products on town roads. I could see not being able to do it on state roads or the federal highway, but yeah, the re I, I think the opinion at this point is that the restriction on travel would be inappropriate. Um, again, I think that that's something that you're going to see that Deep will look at um, specifically as they move forward. So I would expect that I'm going to have maybe some more information on that for you in the future. So if the state does do something, then they'll ban it on state roads, and then we would amend that to ban it on town roads, most likely. Or would P they just ban it on all roads in the state? Well, I, I, I think that it is unlikely that it will happen, but we will see, um, because you get into, certainly as you understand, the restriction on commerce. Um, and I, I, I don't think that we're gonna see, um, 
they're, what I what I'm thinking that they're probably going to do is probably do some sort of a um, maybe a registration procedure or something on along those lines. I mean, if we we look back to uh, in. in Mr. Piper was not on the board, but we did the blasting ordinance. When I reviewed the uh, pertinent state regulations with regard to blasting, I mean, they have very specific regulations with regard to the transport of blasting materials. So, you know, it's likely that they would probably do something similar along those lines, I would think. Okay, any other comments? I just have one, and well, how would how would the word trans that says it one of the prohibited acts is the, uh, the transfer or or process of of waste from natural gas or oil extraction by is that like from one truck to, what, what kind of transfer transfer from like one truck to another? I that's how because it also says handling as well. Um, I, I think that that's what, yeah, the intention is, is to cover cover transferring it. Okay. And in the, I think in that section that you just referenced, you know, I think it does cover the storage disposal, you know, um, you know, uh, of any, any kind of waste in terms of, you know. But, but a truck carrying this material can still travel on, on 91, for example, which comes through North Haven, well, and if it yeah. jackknifes and tips over, I'd want the stuff transferred out of it. <laughs> I don't know, wouldn't you? Well, that would be an emergency situation. Okay. I would think in that circumstance that certainly what would happen would be that, that the state would be contacted, and they're very responsive in those instances. Um, Deep would come down and I think be involved and and, ha and handle that. Right, because as we learned, we had a presentation a couple of Board of Selectmen meetings ago. I've forgotten, I'm sorry, the woman's <coughs> name. She gave an excellent presentation and this material is quite hazardous. And so you're confident that they they would promptly attend to it. The, I mean, they, 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 they yeah. do. Um, yeah, they, they, they have been very responsive to those types of incidences. Um, I, I'm just aware of a couple of things that uh, fire has made me aware of um, where they've called and, and they come immediately if there's a concern that there's, that there's a hazardous situation. Okay, could we entertain a motion? Yes, going to item six, I will make a motion resolved to recommend that the town meeting adopt an ordinance prohibiting waste generated from gas and oil drilling and extraction activities, hydraulic fracturing waste, at chapter 130 of the ordinances of the town of North Haven to prohibit the use, storage, disposal, sale, acquisition, transfer, handling, treatment, and or processing of waste from natural gas or oil extraction within the town of North Haven as set forth therein to protect the health, safety, welfare and property of the public. All right, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, motion, second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, item number seven. Um, to consider and vote upon whether to recommend that the town meeting adopt an illicit discharge in connection to stormwater drainage systems ordinance at chapter 133 of the ordinances of the town of North Haven to establish the methods for controlling the introduction of pollutants into the municipal separate storm sewer system to comply with the requirements of the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System permit process. Okay, Lynn Sadowski. Uh, Lynn Sadowski, Director of Public Works. Um, as you know, um, during the time of budget, we uh, came before the Board of Finance to uh, continue our work on the MS4 stormwater programs um, and essentially part of that compliance with the Connecticut DEEP uh, program for stormwater compliance is developing the legal authority for us as staff to be able to identify an illicit discharge which will for, for simpler purposes an illegal discharge once we can identify it we would then through this ordinance have the legal authority to do something about it including 
uh, stopping it, uh, penalties if somebody didn't uh, comply with our ordinance and our requests. And, um, you know, it's been a critical part of our compliance with the DEP. Uh, they, through UConn and CLEAR, have provided to us a model ordinance, which we've then taken um, and tweaked for the town of North Haven's purposes. And what you have in front of you is a sample of that, well, this is the model ordinance, but put into North, Han North Haven language so that the stormwater management committee, if you will, consisting of myself, uh, the town engineer, the land use administrator, and the zoning enforcement officer, or one of our designees, if we have somebody else on the member of our team, are able to identify these illegal discharges and prohibit them and stop them and do our best to stop them. Um, and, and also enforce the portion of it that would uh, require penalties if somebody did not comply with us. Um, and so it does have an enforcement uh, arm in it at $100 a day penalty. Um, so as part of the DEEP uh, stormwater MS4 program, we are required by July 1 of 2018, which is you know just a few weeks away, to endorse and approve an ordinance for giving us the legal authority to enforce the illicit discharge and detection and elimination system program as part of the Connecticut DEEP stormwater program, MS4. Well, I know that's, far that's be a it, mouthful. I'm sorry. Far, far be, far. <laughs> it's it's pretty technical. Far be it from yeah. us to not comply with the state mandate. So, are you satisfied, Ms. Vasquez, yeah, with and, the and ordinance? Yeah, and I think over time we will, you know, um, you know, review it and um, you know understand it better and and see how it fits in with with our programs. But yeah, we we received something from UConn, and we've been working with UConn Clear as part of an arm for the Connecticut DEP. So for us, we were comparing the ordinance to what they gave us, and, and we were we were satisfied with that. And how was it tweaked for North Havenese? Well, it, to be honest with you, uh, there there were certain aspects of it that I thought um, needed to be expounded upon uh, particularly in the enforcement area that was that was a area that I did quite a bit of work on um, because I was concerned uh, that for instance the citation process was that that is a statutory process when you have a citation hearing officer that you're dealing with that all of uh, the due process elements weren't actually in their model um, so I thought it was important, you know, for the public, um, you know, somebody who might receive a citation of notice of violation to understand what process they needed to follow. Um, so I did uh, heavily revise that. Um, I looked at... So that's on uh, page well, it's 13, 308? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yes. Um, and... Uh, Again, some of the language, uh, just kind of cleaning up the language, making it more clear to uh, someone who may not be sophisticated, because when we're talking about pollutants, you know, we're not just necessarily talking about, um, you know, certainly hazardous substances and waste, but we're talking about even cooking grease and, and you know, detergents and degreasers, and so some of the things that, you know, people would commonly use in their home. So um, I think that uh, there's a lot to this. There's a lot to what the town's doing to meet the, the new requirements, the new permitting requirements, mm -hmm. and it is very involved. It's very involved from a monitoring standpoint. Um, and it, as Ms. Yeah. Sadowski said, they've created a committee comprised of the appropriate Which is where, officials. where we come in as when you said, what did you tweak? So we, we formed a stormwater management committee, the, myself. The four of you. Yeah, but, but also field operations is involved with it. The wastewater treatment plant is involved in it. Okay. So we, depending on what types of things you're reporting on or what you're doing or what you're overseeing, we could grab from various groups. So, but the, the, the start of it was the Stormwater Management Committee, which was myself, the town engineer, land use administrator, and the, the zoning enforcement officer. So we, we took their model ordinance and made it our, our own. So it works for us. Okay. So the town has a lot of information online 
um, with regard to the requirements, mm -hmm. and 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 you have you've done a great job. Um, Thanks. On the report, and mm -hmm. the report is available online, so you could have an understanding of of the issues that the town is dealing with. There are not a lot of known illicit discharge situations that yeah. haven't, there simply haven't been. There is a list in the report um, actually that, that details the ones that are known. Um, it's like a, a failed septic is an example of a, an illicit discharge. You know, if you know that you have a failed septic system, you report it to the health department, they report it to us, and then we work with that resident to get that issue corrected. If we had, for example, a combined sewer overflow, um, combined sewer issue where our sanitary sewer and our our catch basin uh, drainage system was combined, which it is not, we've never found anything like it. But some towns, is, like the city of New Haven, have to deal with things like that called CSOs. But those are examples of illicit discharges, as well. And this ordinance provides the legal authority, the framework of legal authority to address those. Exactly. Issues. Correct. Yep. Yeah. And thank you for looking out for due process and thinking about the Constitution of the United States. Um, the other thing I would like to point State out to you seem to that, that might be helpful if you're interested in knowing more, again, because your staff is going to be involved in doing a lot in order to now comply. Um, and it's a good idea. You can go on the NEMO website. What I did to get ready for reviewing their report and also for um, just reviewing the model ordinance and seeing what else sort of could be included. There are a number of videos online on the, on the NEMO website. So if you are interested in knowing more about the requirements, there are videos that explain in, in, a, in a pretty terrific way, I think. Yeah. Um, but in actually, the young lady that you've been working with is in the Yeah, room. Amanda Ryan, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. it, does, it does exempt. Um, uh, from the from um, an illicit discharge, any I think they use the uh, term or uh, the, the term in the ordinance uncontaminated groundwater discharges, including, uh, but not limited to a number of different things. Correct. So I think the key again under this is that it's it's really it's really um, what's really illicit is something that's potentially a pollutant. Correct or illegal. Yeah. Uncontaminated groundwater. Yeah. Um, when or you any kind of uncontaminated water. And, and Bill, if you think about, you know, a long time ago, you used to have, the, you hear these rumors of so-and-so pulling up over a storm drain and changing their oil and, and you know, through our, um, you know, summer fellowships and intern programs for which Nick is in the audience, he's been involved in, you know, placarding the catch basins, uh, like interns before him, educating the folks saying, you know, don't dump in, don't dump this drains to waterways. Oh, the picture of the fish. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. That. yeah. But that's all a part of this program to, um, essentially, they've, they've identified our pollutant of concern for North Haven as bacteria. Bacteria could be from geese, birds, waterfowl. It could be from, uh, you know, pet waste, fertilizers. Mm -hmm. So we have, a, we have a long way to go, but, but we, only ha we are focusing on one pollutant. And so it's a, for us, it's, it's another way to give us the legal authority if we were to find something illegal that we saw um, to eliminate that discharge with staff. Okay. Um, well, it seems to be a, a well-intended policy from the, the state. It's, it also means more work for you, but the overall goal is good. So where are we here? Are we um, now to eight to make the to resolution? Make the resolution, yes. Well, I, I'm certainly supportive of this. So if I may make the motion number eight, I move resolve to recommend that the town meeting adopt an illicit discharge and connection to stormwater drainage systems ordinance at chapter 133 of the ordinances of the town of North Haven to establish the methods for controlling the introduction of pollutants into the municipal separate storm sewer system to comply with the requirements of the national pollutant discharge elimination system permit process. All right, there's a motion. Is there a second? No second. All right, any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Next item. Number nine, uh, to, con to consider and vote upon whether to recommend that the town meeting appropriate from the unappropriated fund balance a sum not to exceed 220000 for the North Haven Police Public School Security Supernumerary Program to be established by ordinance at Chapter 163 of the ordinances of the town of North Haven 
to protect the health, safety, and welfare of students enrolled at the elementary schools and middle school in the town of North Haven. Okay, this was just uh, unanimously approved by the Board of Finance at our previous meeting. Is there a motion to move the resolution? Well, I'd like to have a little discussion first pursuant to paragraph nine. Okay. Um, Okay, this is not on the ordinance. This is on the appropriation right, of the money. Okay, I just wanted to, uh, for those who might have missed the, the Board of Finance meeting earlier, I, I did have an issue with this um, procedurally. I, uh, first and foremost, I want to say that I, I um, support your initiative to improve security at the schools. And I think that um, uh, even though there could be more research necessary in this area, I think that it's hard to say that having a security officer there um, is not better than not having one. You know, you, it, it's just hard to deny that it's going to help with security. So I do support um, the overall program, but. As far as the money goes, I do believe, and I know you and I disagree on this, that it should have been incorporated as part of the budgetary process that we just completed. Uh, the, 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 the budget referendum was less than a month ago after a long five-month budgetary process with uh, workshops. There was a police department workshop, there was a Board of Ed workshop, public hearing, a town meeting. Um, this is uh, this 220,000 is going to be taken from our fund balance and then if I understood you correctly at the Board of Finance meeting earlier today it will then be a standard line item in budgets moving forward that's right but it's not a line item in the 1819 budget that our citizens just voted on and and passed uh, with a very close vote a 16 vote margin uh, they just passed a budget, and that 220 is not in here. Um, I do agree a bit with Mrs. Caldwell about the the notice. I know you want to move forward, and you want to have it in place for for um, the school year that starts probably in late August. But um, this is going to be a you know a town meeting right after school ends. It, you know, there's going to be 30 people there, if that, and. These f folks are going to be voting on this 220,000. I really feel that every effort should have been made to include it as part of of uh, the budget. So, from a procedural, budgetary procedural standpoint, I have a problem with this. Although I am generally um, in support of the idea of improving uh, security at the schools. So, I just okay. wanted to say that. All right. So. Um, anything else? Yeah, yeah, the um, what's the uh, last uh, section of the ordinance has a program term? Um, well, we're not on the ordinance yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're just on the resolution. We're just talking right? about the, the, the money. All right. So um, and, and one more other question. Oh, I just I lost it. When but does, it, it, does it, but it does affect the money though. I mean, because we are kind of putting a limit on the program. Right, but but right now we're we're just deciding whether to recommend right. that we appropriate two hundred twenty thousand from um, the unappropriated fund balance. Uh, uh, you know, and again, um, you know, it, it should have been included in the budget. It would have increased the mill rate a little bit. There might have been a different um, impact on the voting. Who who knows? Um, I thought that there was plenty of time to um, put it into the budget, um, but e either way, uh, you know, we'll see who shows up and what the town's folks have to say on uh, the 25th. So I hope a lot of people will show up. But with school just getting out, I'm, I, I don't know. I'll, I'm going to do my part to get as many people there as I can because I think this is an important um, topic. And another thing that I wanted, oh, that's what I wanted to say about finances, because that's what this is about, is finances. I, I also said, and I want to say again, um, in the form of the Board of Selectmen meeting, that um, 
I think that, uh, it, you know, you mentioned that another step down the line is going to be improved infrastructure, which might require bonding. Yes. Do you anticipate any security cameras included in that? Because yes. from my discussions with principals and other administrators, uh, we need school, we need cameras. Uh, Monowee School has 10 doors leading outside. And um, I don't really see how one resource officer can monitor 10 doors. And I, I really think that cameras with an ability for the SRO officer to monitor, you know, with some sort of device, the cameras from those uh, would, would be very helpful. And I wish that that infrastructure was in place before we had the um, SROs, but it's a good first step. Okay. That's all. You know, I think as, as you know, I was also at the Board of, in, in attendance of the Board of Finance meeting, and I think, um, again, I was very much satisfied with the explanation that the reason it wasn't included in the budget process was that I think there were some complications in terms of, uh, um, you know, uh, the uh, police union in terms of, and, how, and the status of the, uh, the supernumeraries and everything. So. But I can definitely understand, you know, you know, your point too, Sally. It just seemed. I mean, we just voted on the budget. It's not like we voted several months ago. I mean, we it, um, we just voted a few weeks ago, and I do understand the complexities of the pension review. But as the first selectman said, this has been going on for a long time. Uh, I, I just wish that uh, it would have been more in the spirit of our town charter if it if it was included in the budget that was voted on at the referendum by the 950 people that showed up to vote there, rather than the 30 or 50 that are gonna show up and vote on it at the town meeting. That's all I'm, I'm saying. I we did, a, we did have a more, I think, um, the overall budget process, is, as we both know, or all, all three of us know, was more complicated this year than it has been in other years for a variety of reasons in terms of uh, where we started and where we ended up with. I think they're complicated over here. It was pretty complicated last year too, but okay. Uh, I, I just, uh, that's just my feeling. I wish it was in the budget uh, rather than being uh, um, sort of uh, hitched on to this town meeting with all of these other matters. Uh, um, I just wish it was in the budget, that's all. So if you wanna make the well, go on to number 10. Yes, so we'll meet a motion on the resolution. Yes. Can I get a motion? Can we have a motion on the resolution itself? Um, That's number 10. Number 10. My turn? Yes. Um, to recommend the town meeting appropriate um, from the unappropriated fund balance, a resolve to recommend that the town uh, meeting appropriate from the unappropriated fund balance a sum not to exceed 220000 for the North Haven Public, North Haven Police Public School Security Supernumerary Program to be established by ordinance at Chapter 163 of the ordinances of the Town of North Haven to protect the health, safety, and welfare of students enrolled at the public schools in the Town of North Haven. All right. Make a motion. A motion. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to second it uh, because I've made it well understood. I don't like procedurally how it's being done. But I overall, I'm putting safety of the kids up first and foremost, so I will second it. All right, motion and a second. All those in, any other discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, item number 11. Uh, yes, first we have to uh, consider and vote upon whether to recommend that the town meeting adopt an ordinance at chapter 163 of the ordinances of the town of North Haven to establish the North Haven Police Public School Security Supernumerary Program, public school supernumerary, to protect the health, safety, and welfare of students enrolled at public schools in the town of North Haven. Um, yeah, that's it. So, okay. I'd like to make some comments about the ordinance. Go right ahead. Um, I I um, I, re I recall during the board of finance meeting, uh, the police chief spoke um, a bit on uh, on this issue and what the S the school resource officers will be doing, and he said that they were not going to be involved in discipline, but it looks like on one sixty three dash two in the program description. Um, I would like to read the general, it has a list of general duties 
will include but not limited to. And I'd like to read all of them. You gave a sort of a summary of some of them, but not all of them. I'd like to read all of them. Uh, be visible at all times. Monitor morning and afternoon bus, ram, and parent guardian drop-off location. Monitor visitors to the schools. Monitor school hallway traffic. Monitor cafeteria areas during lunch. Monitor outside student activity. Patrol the exterior perimeters, perimeter of the schools. Patrol the interior of the schools. Receive, document, and investigate minor complaints. Assist the school resource officer and other officers with investigations that require arrest and or juvenile referrals. Assist school officials with conferences as may be requested and appropriate. And finally, coach and mentor youths when appropriate. Um, some of this does sound quite in the line of, of, of discipline. Um, I, I, I have no problem with A, B, and C, being visible, monitoring the buses, getting on and off, monitoring visitors, which to me is the most important. To me, the purpose of the officer that's going to be hired at these schools is to prevent intruders from coming in and harming our children. And so, to me, monitoring visitors to the school, especially at the elementary schools, is the most important um, for me. But when I get to monitoring hallway traffic, monitoring cafeteria areas during lunch, monitoring outside student activity, I mean, is that recess? Is that s sports activities? Is that, uh, I'm not sure. Um, uh, you know, and then uh, receiving, investigating minor complaints. Again, that sounds disciplinary. Assisting officers with investigations that require arrest and juvenile. Uh, I, it just seems like for this one person, it's, it's, it's going a bit beyond um, the stated purpose, which is to protect the health, safety, welfare of students enrolled. Um, and that's the, the problem I have with this long list. It just uh, seems, some of them seem to be under the purview of what teachers and other paraprofessionals should be doing rather than our school security officer. It kind so. of mirrors what we already have in the high school and middle school. Mm -hmm. And I've heard no complaints about the middle school or high school. When you mean we we'll already have, have as an official policy of the Board of Ed? Oh, we have, that's what the resource officer does in the, in the high school and when he's at the middle but school. But did these A through L come from the Board of Ed? No, this is from the police chief, the police okay. commission, and there was some input uh, from the superintendent. But not from the duly elected members of the Board of Ed? Duly elected yeah. members of the Board of Ed um, from what I was told are in unanimous agreement that they'd like school resource officers in the schools starting this, this school year. Right, but I think some of them are gonna be surprised that they're not gonna have any um, impact on the duties of the supernumeraries or the selection of them. Well, I would say uh, this. At that's, the, some, at, that's some of the pushback I've already gotten. So I would say this at the town meeting, if, mm. there's, if there's a movement to change some of this, mm. we certainly can redo the ordinance. So there's, that right. that's we're, that's what, a lot of flexibility. In yeah, that. is this this was drafted by you, Attorney Capola? Yes, it was. And is and what what do you what is monitoring outside student activity? What, well, what I, I would consider that to be exterior of yes, the school. Recess. Recess. So recess. so recess. Okay. The, you know, there there could be okay. activities that are occurring outside other than recess as well. And, that, and who's whether doing that now or, for at the elementary schools? I, I would assume that it certainly is not a uniformed police officer, right, that, right, it, it's that it's teachers and such. And the hallways, uh, caf you know, hallways, cafeterias. I, I, I don't know. I, I just, I, I think that I, I just want, <laughs> I just was hoping that these officers were going to be more uh, protecting the schools from intruders. Well, that's the main purpose, but if there's an incident in a school, you don't want the officer who could possibly be beckoned by a teacher for help, you don't want the officer to say, well, it's not in the ordinance. Right. You know, God forbid if there's somebody, if there's a serious bullying issue there that well, the teacher I, can't handle. I, can I make a non-legal comment? Sure. I, I think that um, the bullying in, in this day and age is very significant. Teachers want the assistance and, of the and officer. I, you know, I do have a middle school child I do have an elementary school child it's it, it it's shocking 
right? how pervasive it is. But um, from the emails that I received, and I'm sure you got many more uh, from citizens, most were, most of the ones I received flooded in after the school, school shootings. You know, not, yeah. not one incident of bullying where an, a principal or an assistant principal handles it in some sort of disciplinary matter. I don't get flooded with requests for improved school security in those situations, which have been happening in schools uh, even back when we were in school. Um, you know, I, I, the, the parents that I'm hearing from are concerned about school shootings and, and other violent actions. And of course. I, you know, we had one in Milford, we had Sandy Hook, you know, um, and that's why uh, I was just, uh, uh, you know, a little overwhelmed with this long list of of, of duties. And yeah, but I think if, you know, I think the situation maybe varies based on, you know, the elementary school versus the middle school or the high school. Right. And I, I don't think you have much, much potential for an internal threat from, you know, I, but you know, they're, you know, in terms of the children in, in elementary school. So I could see your point about, you know, maybe be, being concerned about an outside threat to the children either inside or outside the school. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but again, I think there have been shootings in middle school as well as in high school. So, you know, mm -hmm. both internal and external, you know. So I, I, I just wonder, too, like, I mean, do we even, I mean, it does say, you know, to include but not limited to. And there's always a danger in so describing, even more. <laughs> describing some things either completely or, you know, I think it, it's something that evolves over time. Well, before we bring up Chief McLaughlin, yeah. here's my opinion yeah. on this. Can one person do all this? Yeah. That's what I want to know. My opinion on this is this, and I'll be very clear and specific. We don't want an officer to be so marginalized that if there's an incident in the school, for him to say, I'm not getting involved, I'm waiting for a school shooting. Mm -hmm. That would be the most ridiculous thing that we could do. So we need to have a scope of responsibilities so this officer is an asset to the administrators who want this, an asset to the principals who want this layer of protection. Tom? Just to, to clarify a few of the things that are here, um, for the most part, this mirrors what the SRO has been doing over at the high school for probably the last 20 or 25 years. Okay. Uh, they're, the, the nature of our work is that you can't really limit us, you can't put us into uh, one little basket. If, for instance, uh, if there was a fire in the building and there was a fire extinguisher there, you would expect him to put the fire out. Nice. Um, you know, things like that. Um, what I tried to explain during the, uh, the Board of Finance meeting was that a lot of times, yes, we, the, mission one is building security and security of the, of the student population. But part of that, when the population moves within the building, the population goes outside. You might have two or three classes that are out in the playground. I'm not saying we have to be there uh, and be big brother watching over them, but we should be within eye view of what's going on just to make sure that we don't have uh, you know, someone that's, that shouldn't be there, somebody that's loitering on the school property, uh, you know, whether they're there for, you know, some self-gratification of their own, uh, with, with uh, young kids out in the, uh, in, in the, uh, the playground. Um, so we want, we want those, those things to be, uh, you know, we want the officer to be able to do those things. Uh, Any time that there's a large group of people, as I mentioned in the earlier meeting, um, that that intent that, that that's your that's your kill zone. That's your your killing field. All right, that's what you really have to be mindful of. Um, we're not looking to to walk down the hallway and discipline anybody. Uh, but if you know if there's a if there is a time when the the school needs our assistance whether it means sending somebody to juvenile court or whatever, that's, that's what they have to do. Um, we do have limited, I'll grant it, limited mental health training. We mentioned that in the earlier meeting. Uh, the officers now, uh, I think the, the uh, comment earlier was the de-escalation. That, that's, a, that's a new trigger uh, within uh, law enforcement. That, that, that is being uh, 
taught to, to many of the officers. Mm -hmm. uh, officers that would be working in this, kind of, in this capacity obviously would have to be exposed to that type of training. So for the most part, when you see this whole litany of what, what the person has to do and not limited to, it's pretty much what the school resource officer does at the, at the school right now. If, if he has somebody that's being harassed uh, by Facebook or some other social media, um, we document it and we investigate it. Uh, and, and the same would hold true for the middle school or even if it was uh, fourth, fifth grade. Uh, if, if the school wants to get us involved in that, then that's it. Um, you know, school should be a learning environment, it should be a, a place where the kids feel safe. Um, and parents should feel like when their kids get on the bus, you know, from point A to point B and then back home, uh, they, should, they should be in a safe zone, plain and simple. Well, what inspired me really to, to question some of the items listed in, in these duties was, was um, Chief, your, your comment at the finance meeting that the SRO will the the security resource officer will not be involved in discipline and a lot of this i mean you just said they could be referred for juvenile or or yes. investigate minor complaints it does seem to have a major disciplinary or stopping bullying in the cafeteria it does seem to have a large disciplinary component um so is it a discipline in your opinion attorney i, I don't is i really don't think it's i don't think we're taking on a, a disciplinary role in that in Maybe that we fashion have a different if, definition if, well i'm just saying in my in my world if if you if you have criminal conduct that breaks the law all right then then you you just you you went beyond disciplinary okay you know i you know that's that's a that's a if it's a criminal act it's a criminal act you know it's still we have a um, a juvenile review board and 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 this is this is an opportunity for us if if need be to to get more involved in that right from the get-go as opposed to coming in after the fact mm -hmm. okay Again, it's, it's like a juvenile diversion instead of going to juvenile court you can do something like that right I, I want to make it very clear to you chief and to the board and to the folks here and watching I fully support putting these officers in place and I think it will help security I do support it but that doesn't mean you can't question some uh, aspects absolutely of not. it or, or um, amend the ordinance from or amend it right. at the town yes. meeting so. right so we could wait these are yeah. just some of my uh, comments on it I do wish the Board of Ed was a little bit more involved the declaration of purpose says uh, to protect the health safety and welfare of students enrolled at the public schools in the town of North Haven our, our friends over at the Board of Ed might think that's their responsibility and so perhaps they should say to enhance the protection of, of health, safety, and welfare of students enrolled. And I do wish that the Board of Ed was a little bit more involved in the selection process. So I process. think what we can do, if you like, and we have the flexibility to amend the ordinance, of you know. Course. So the goal is to add the resource officers, but I'll send this over to Bob Cronin just to have him take another look at it, and he gets, we'll get some feedback from the Board of Education. Uh, that's what I would love the members of the Board of Ed to, to, to look at this, because they certainly uh, did not have this in front of them at that March Board of Ed meeting when they were uh, given the idea of having security officers in this in all the schools paid for by the town uh, if I were a Board of Ed member my, my hand would have gone up really fast too so we could uh, do but that. I didn't you know so. I, I will need to uh, post the ordinance and the resource officer so any proposed changes to the ordinance so I don't know if if, if you are going to take action on this tonight, if you want to amend the resolution um, to include any particular changes that you want to propose, if you want to, for example, in 163-1, Ms. Boemi just suggested that we say uh, to, to enhance, enhance the protection. The protection because I think of, that would help our Board of Ed members. And then we'll leave everything else as is and leave it to the wisdom of the town meeting. All right. I'll go along with that. Enhance there is also yes. a typo um, oh. in 163-2 uh, under subsection B. It says but bus ram instead of ramp. I'm not quite sure how. Oh, yeah, I'll miss that. Right. Ram. I apologize. Okay. Why, why do we, just out of curiosity, why do we even need an ordinance for this? Why, why, what purpose is an ordinance serving? Why can't we just, based on a decision, make this decision? And 
Well, uh, the ordinance was something that was considered to do it in a program type framework and also to put a term on it. Um, y you did mention before when we were talking about the appropriation, the fact that at 163-3 there is a term period. Um, so that's the way that it came to me was, you know, how can we potentially put an initial term on this so that we're evaluating it and so forth, and I suggested the ordinance. Do you have any um, other ordinances we have, that have terms on uh, We do. Lots we do. Them. We do have, um, I think one of our tax programs has mm. a, right. uh, perhaps our senior tax, senior freeze, tax freeze, I think was the last one that I did uh, that's, that's um, that does have a term, for, term limit yeah. on it. And, and, yeah. and we could always, you know, tweak this and change this as we go Absolutely, along. Right. And another, another thing that I think will add to this is when the police department renovation project is completed, including the upgrade in communications, if I recall correctly, that's also supposed to help um, with school security and enable better communication from headquarters and police cars to schools. So there'll, there'll be other factors and changes happening on the horizon. Am I, yeah. you're, the, the chief is nodding yes, everybody, so. Yeah, so, you know, stay there. I, I, if you don't mind me saying that you seem to be nodding in agreement with me that on the horizon there are other types of changes, specifically communications upgrades uh, that are part of the police department head, headquarters project that may assist in all of this. Is that a fair statement? Uh, that's very fair. And um, matter of fact, we even with our changes at our PD, um, it looks like at this point we are likely going to um, adopt the platform of what the Board of Ed is, uh, has uh, at the middle school and I think possibly the high school, I'm not quite sure, uh, but I think they're also going to try to, to uh, migrate that same uh, security platform as far as the cameras um, to, and I don't want to do a commercial for, uh, for Milestone, but I think they're going with a Milestone uh, platform. They have it at one of the schools, and, and we are going to uh, make a change on ours with our new building so that we can um, share video uh, with the, the school. You know, God forbid you have to respond to the school. You have, um, you can, we can, we can get into their, uh, their, their camera if, if, they, uh, if they allow that. And would there be a way to share that video with the officer on site? Correct. Either the officer on site could, would be able to have it. So and, they're, they're and also, also the responding uh, cars could have that information. Right. So that that's that helps me in my, you know, concerns that that we're asking too much of this officer that that there's other improvements on the horizon. That's four million dollars that improvement. I know that as part of the I bonding know. package, improving the police department, which I fully supported and, mm, and commended was, you for your initia initi initiating. We're it, trying Michael. to move forward, folks, and getting positive <laughs> things done here, and that's another good example. That $4 yes, million so that's why I brought there, it so. up. Okay. But uh, so uh, you know, again, I I fully support. Uh, the steps that you're initiating to improve school security. I just had a little problem with the money and the budgetary. Okay. Um, I want to see how the folks respond to this, um, and uh, we'll see what the Board of Ed has to say. And right. I, I wish they were a little bit more engaged in the process. That's all. All right. Well, we Thank will you. send this over to Mr. Cronin. Okay. okay so where right. does that leave us? I think we're on. Um, well, we have 11A. 11A, 11A right. So. Uh, 11A, I will, I will do a uh, motion resolved to recommend the town meeting adopt an ordinance as we've amended uh, at chapter 163 of the ordinances of the town of North Haven to establish the North Haven Police Public School Security Supernumerary Program to protect the health, safety, and welfare of students enrolled at the public schools in the town of North Haven. So again, just for clarification, before the motion gets seconded, in case you want to amend it further, um, the the amendments that you're speaking of are in 163-1 to enhance the protection of the health, safety, and welfare, and then, of course, to amend the typographical error in 163-2, subsection oh, B, me, yeah, ram to, to ram. ram to ramp. Yes. Thank you. I saw RAM, and I thought it stood for something. You know, there's so many acronyms. 
I'm not up on everything, so I thought, what's RAM? It must be. I thought it stood for something. I didn't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So we are at section. You have to call oh, we have to, vote. Yeah. On I'll second the second second motion. Second. All right. Motion second. Any other discussion on that? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, next item. Where are we? Number 12. 12. I'll, I'll do 12. To consider and vote upon a call for a special town meeting to be held Monday, June 25th, 2018 at North Haven High School, 221 Elm Street, North Haven, Connecticut at 7 p.m. for the town meeting to consider and act upon the recommendations of the Board of Selectmen to amend the Code of Ethics at Chapter 30 of the Ordinances of the Town of North Haven to adopt an ordinance prohibiting waste generated from gas and oil drilling and extract extraction activities known as hydraulic fracturing waste at chapter 130 of the ordinances of the town of North Haven in a minute to adopt an illicit discharge and connection to stormwater drainage systems ordinance at chapter 133 of the ordinances of the town of North Haven to approve the program submitted in accordance with the neighborhood assistance act as detailed above and to appropriate to the un from the unappropriated fund balance a sum not to exceed 220,000 for the North Haven police elementary and middle school supernumerary program all as detailed above so I think we're considering that yes I I'm always in favor of calling for town meetings so all right that's what I have to say okay so, Bill you want to read the yes. resolution at 13 or do you have any discussion yes. on and, the considering and again, it? you know since I'm a little bit new at this um, I think we we talked about the two ordinances but mm. should we also be um, um, adopting ordinance uh, from chapter 163 for the uh, Supernumerary? Yes. Oh, yes. Which is not really, I think, in the um, in the description you just read. I think it was left. Looks like it was left out. All right. Do I have to reread the no, consider the, language, no. or just put it in the resolution? I just have to somehow say it coherently in the resolution, yes. which I don't think it yes, says so in the well, resolution. I, I think that you should amend the motion. Well, we haven't done the motion yet. We just yeah. did the considering part. Oh. Right. So I'll include in consideration. Um, uh, to recommend that the town meeting adopt an ordinance at, ordinance at chapter 163 of the ordinances of the town of North Haven to establish the North Haven Police Public School Security Supernumerary Program to protect the health, safety, and welfare of students that enroll, enrolled at public schools in the town of North Haven. Yes. Good call there, Bill. You're not that no. <laughs> Well, it's a long, a long-winded one. I think I've got. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do it as well as you did it. Uh, well, don't under, forget to add it under in 13. 13. Go ahead. Um, to call a special town meeting to be held Monday, June 25th, 2018, at the North Haven High School, 221 Elm Street, North Haven, Connecticut, at 7 p.m. For the town meeting to consider and act upon a recommend to act upon the recommendations of the Board of Selectmen to amend the Code of Ethics at Chapter 30 of the Ordinances of the Town of North Haven. To adopt an ordinance prohibiting waste uh, waste generated from gas and oil drilling and extraction activities, hydraulic fracturing waste, um, at Chapter 130 of the ordinances of the Town of North Haven, to adopt an illicit discharge in connection to stormwater drainage systems ordinance at Chapter 133 of the ordinances of the Town of North Haven, uh, to um, adopt an um, to adopt um, an ordinance um, uh, entitled Public School Security Supernumerary Program uh, at Chapter 163 of the Town of North of the Ordinances of the Town of North Haven, uh, and to approve the program submitted, oh, to approve the program submitted in accordance with the Neighborhood Assistance Act as detailed above. And then finally, to appropriate and to appropriate to the unappropriated fund balance a sum not to exceed $220,000 for the North Haven Police Elementary and Public School Supernumerary Program, all as detailed above. Okay, Sally and Bill, very good on yeah. reading the resolutions. Do I need to amend his motion that we are recommending that the town meeting adopt Ordinance Chapter 163? He said to adopt it we're not adopting here we're recommending 
Right. Okay, never mind. Yeah. That's okay. All right. I'll second. I'll the, second the you resolution. Have, you don't have the power to adopt. Right. right. It's the town meeting okay. adopts it. So. Right. Because even the other, I think you even the out, other. You left out recommend. You I think even the other ones though are new, like the uh, yeah. waste ones are actually new, so we didn't use recommend for them either. I think they're all new ordinances as well. Right. But I, I can see your point. Okay. I think we're recommending that all the ordinances be adopted. Right. I will second uh, the motion as read by the second selectman. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer, Lynn. Thank you very much, Sally and Bill. We're at the end of the meeting, but item number 14, public comment to the agenda. I just have one more follow-up comment since um, there was a lot of discussion on whether my concern about having police officers in schools was, um, was valid. And I just want to say that there are uh, the studies that about the effectiveness in police and schools research shows that there are plenty of unintended consequences to students. Um, there are higher rates of suspension, expulsion, and arrest that funnel kids in the, into the cr uh, criminal justice system. And this is especially true of students of color. So um, I don't think that while I don't have data on the, our particular SRO officer in the high school, I don't think anybody has it on, uh, um, data on how that has impacted students in, in the school. So I think if, if um, we'll certainly find out how the, the um, public meeting goes, but I really hope that if this goes forward, that there is a, a big effort to do some real training of police officers because um, in terms of de-escalation and of using a different approach than a, uh, a criminal justice approach because research shows that that just funnels the kids into, um, into a system that doesn't help them in the long run. So Jenny, when you were on the Board of Ed for how many years? Six years, right? Yeah. Did you ever hear one incident? Yes. Just, you're referring to from our in-store, our in-house, in-school resource officer. Any any negatives on that? About the resource officer himself, no, because when they would, there were incidents of kids that would come to us where we would have hearings, in which I can't speak of exactly what was talked about in those hearings, of kids who um, had incidents of um, uh, expulsion and suspension, and there there was definitely in North Haven there is more of a punishment type system um, for those kids. Uh, how, what the interaction was with the SRO, you know, SRO at the high school, that I don't know. Okay, so what, what we're doing is expanding the existing model. So if you had no incidents, you're no, under no, no, six no. years. No, 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 I don't, what I'm saying is I was not informed as a Board of Ed member, I would not be informed of that. There were incidents of kids that were suspended and ex, uh, or expelled that maybe that might not have been the best approach for them. Um, when you take a child who has a behavioral issue, and you, ex and this is outside of the SRO, but the, the, the fact is the data shows that when you have police officers in school, those incidents go up. Um, because that's how they're trained to deal with behavior. People in schools, um, whether they are behaviorists, psychologists, mental health workers, or teachers, are taught to, to deal with behavior in a different model. And so the concern is, and I can provide you with plenty of research articles that show that this is a concern. And I, what I'm asking is, don't disregard the concern because people um, feel if they have a, 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 a armed guard in schools, there are some people who feel more safe. There are some people who feel less safe. And I just, um, Obviously, it's going to a town meeting. I wish it had been done another way because I think this is a big issue that I think people should have an opportunity to um, learn about the consequences, the benefits versus the consequences. Most of those school shootings that you're talking about had armed security guards in them, and that didn't stop a school shooting. So I think the, if you want to stop the school shootings, you know, a lot of what people talk about is you, you, inter you um, intervene with kids at the point at which they're vulnerable. And the way to intervene with them is not through law enforcement. And that's my concern. It has nothing to do with putting down police officers. I think they play a very important role. But I am very concerned that we are hopping into something. And I do not believe the Board of Ed has done a lot of discussion around this. Because at their meeting, it was it was very brief discussion on it. And it was about how it would be funded through um, through the town and there would be more discussion to come later. So I don't believe there was a lot of discussion and thought put behind it. And I just 
to me, this is this is a this could have a huge impact on our kids who are struggling behaviorally, emotionally, um, or who have special needs. So, are you saying an in, in a, a school resource officer triggers and yeah. manifests that that behavior? Yes, that's but what we, that's what the data is showing. The data is showing that when you have a an armed police officer in schools, the rates of suspension, expulsion, and um, you know their their interaction with um, the justice system increases. So there is data that there's a lot of data that's that supports that that's the that occurs. So all I'm saying about this issue is not that we don't want our kids to be safe, but we don't want unintended consequences of a decision that's being made without really looking at the reason all of this research has been done is so that we can make different decisions in the future. So um, I, I, I'm just gonna implore that if this passes at the town meeting, that a lot of research goes into how to implement this because you can really have a detrimental effect on parents. And if you wanna do some research on what's, you know, if there's ever been incidents at the school resource officer, at the high school, I'm not the person to ask. It's about going back and doing surveys with parents and kids who are either currently in the high school or who've come out of the high school. Well, we've had lar we've had unanimous support for in uh, for uh, for our school resource officer in in the high school, and when he goes to the middle school, the teachers, the administrators, the principals, the superintendent. They're behind it 100 percent. Well, I, I, I go back to the research that that shows that, you know, but some of that research, though, I think relates to schools that in and of themselves beyond an active shooter situation are inherently uh, inherently no, more violent based on no, the studies. No, I don't than, think that's true. Than what we experience in our school system. I, I don't right. think that's true. Because if well, you, like if the Chica Chicago school system is inherently more violent than the. I understand that, but I don't think the research system. has only been done. I think a lot of times the research is skewed like that. Well, but what I'm saying is the research on this topic has not and, only and been I done on inner school. it comes down to a trade-off. Would you rather have somebody there or not have somebody there if you have an active shooter? Well, And as a parent, I'd rather have somebody there like a police officer because that's what, you know, but at, that's, that's, be, because if that's what they're going to be there for. But here's the thing. If you're looking at what... So I'm not going to worry about when there's an active shooter in the school, I'm not going to worry about whether some kid will have a little bit of a mental health problem because some officer is there when well, somebody shooting the maybe school. Maybe that kid like Adam Lanza is walking in the door no. because they haven't been handled no, appropriately throughout no. their right, um, look, education. I think, so, I think so, we're... I was, I'll, just, I'll say this to you, Jenny. If, if you're, what you're stating has been true here in North Haven, then why hasn't anyone from the Board of Ed, the superintendent, the administration asked to remove that officer? I don't think anybody at the Board of Ed or the school district has done any studies to determine uh, the effectiveness of the school resource officer. And it's, it's bigger than that. It's about, it's about their program. So all I, you, can, you can sit there and de debunk the studies, or you can actually take the time to read them and say, well, maybe we need to make sure that we're implementing this well, and go back and, and actually analyze what's happening in our schools. I don't believe that's been done. I don't think there's been any data analysis, because I've asked for it, data analysis of what happens to our kids who get suspended and expelled long-term wise for them. We have so many professionals, as you know, so many counselors and educated there people There has support. been no, I, being on the Board of Ed and having done the policies, I will tell you there are no studies of our current high school and what happens to our kids long-term um, that long-term in terms of their outcomes. Well, so here's, my, here's how I see this. My job is to give an added layer, layer, layer of security to the school system, and I'm going to be relentless on this. Now, if what you say is true, then it's the Board of Ed's position to tell me that they don't want it. What? That's really what, that's what it boils down to. That's fine. Well, my, I think that on, on the one hand, you're obviously very concerned about school security, but you also have concerns about this proposed program and your concerns are well founded in your six years on the board of ed and years as, I've as worked a, in schools as, in the years. school so i understand that so my suggestion to you you mentioned that there are articles that support your position is to gather these yeah. articles you're free to make copies of them and have them available for people to pick up when they go into the town meeting and then you can make your your argument uh, there as you've made it here tonight and and 
that's what I would, would yeah, recommend. And the other uh, thing too is that you know I think you know knowing I would knowing that there have been studies, you know I think we have to rely on our our police department and our police chief to make sure that. And I think I think the uh, the chief described it maybe in a in a better way where you know he's not there to harass or arrest or do things with kids unless it actually maybe does get to a point where something is violent. Well, or so, something you know, he used the term criminal. So I think there are things that happen in school that you can but, you can uh, choose to handle them from a criminal perspective or you can choose to handle them differently. And when you have a police officer, their their approach is going to be along law enforcement, which is what it should be. And I, I don't want to debate the ins and out of it. My my point was um, that I think that it needs to be a dis this needs to be something that is really well thought through. And I think that people in the town should be well aware that this is going on. And I didn't know anything about it until um, a short period, of, you know, about a week ago, less than a week ago. And I think the Board of Ed voted on it in March because it was sort of a very quick thing right. where they said, oh, they're talking about this. Before it ever happens, we'll have a lot more discussion. And then there's been no more discussion. So, um, yeah, I'm very passionate about it because I've seen what happens to kids where you're trying to de-escalate them and you're getting somewhere and then in comes more of a, of a, a, a law enforcement approach and that kid is in a hold or being taken out of the school. So I feel very passionate about the fact that we need to be um, careful about what we're implementing and making sure it's in the best interest of students. And when you're talking about um, on, a, on a realistic everyday situation, what is going to impact our kids more, the, the likelihood that um, you know they're going to have an impact of how their behavior and their emotion and their their school is going to impact them on an everyday basis and how they grow up is much higher than um, than the active shooting situation which unfortunately unfortunately has increased in the last so many years but many of those situations there have been armed people at the schools and that didn't stop the shooting so it's it's almost a, a false layer of security that has not proven in Columbine, in Parkland, um, even in Texas. I know originally they thought it was the school resource officer and they found out afterwards it was not who stopped that shooter. Milford, where that kid was shot, there's a school resource officer there. So it doesn't necessarily stop a shooting. Um, and I think that we need to make sure that we're, um, we're taking into consideration what in, in <coughs> is gonna have an overall impact on the the health and well-being of our kids and so um, that's you know you know and like in your school experience though I mean you didn't have um, a school resource officer at your school or not well I you taught. I worked in um, I worked in ACES and we had um, we didn't have an armed security guard in in the schools that I had that walked in most of the time if there was a police intervention it was somebody had been called right. in north carolina i worked in north carolina for years and i was between the different schools um, the high school some of them had security offers none of the elementary schools did um, but you know it but how often did you ever have to call somebody in your school experience to in terms of bringing a police officer in? i i never called a police officer that was just not my approach um, but you know there were times where that you might have been, but, but again, even like in our situation here, you know. There, uh, if you're asking how many times an officer was brought into the schools that I worked in, the last school I worked in, it was it was on numerous occasions. But so it's it's not something that didn't but again, happen. You're, I think you were glad that the off. I mean, you'd even be more glad if the officer was there if it escalated to that level. No, I think it escalated with the, you know, with the presence of an a, a police officer is going to have more of an authoritarian sort of approach to. To discipline and which they should um, but if you're working with a kid and you're trying to get them to de-escalate and figure out how to calm themselves down and figure out how to deal with their upset sometimes that can backfire um, so but, but again I think the intention is not for the officer to intervene in that situation right, right. to let you do your job I, I will job. I will send out articles because I think it's important for people yeah, to make an informed all I'm asking is let's yeah, make an informed you're, decision you're, you're free to do that but for me, you know, the the here in Connecticut, the biggest school shooting, of course, was Sandy Hook, which was an elementary school, and it, you know, it's it's my op op opinion that it could have turned out differently if there was an armed guard there. We don't know. Overall, I do I do support it, and all of the principals and administrators that I've spoken to feel that it would it would um, 
help the atmosphere and safety overall in the school. But you do raise some interesting points, so get your research together and, and pass it amongst the townspeople at the town meeting. And, and I, I should tell you, even though I was in 100% disagreement with you before at the other meeting, I'm in 100% agreement with what you just said. That's exactly right, why well, I'm moving forward with this. Well, right, well, I, like I said, I do support the initiative. I just had some procedural okay. problems with right. it. But, um, you know, we just can't totally discount what she's saying. She's free to do her, Mrs. Caldwell is free to do her, her research Absolutely. and present right. her arguments at the town meeting. That's the, uh, the essence of our town meeting form of government. It's each citizen is a legislator and she can um, get up there and, and give her position and we'll see how it goes. I agree with you on that also. And let's hope that some people turn out because uh, if all the people that have contacted us who care who about who are concerned about school security show up you know we're going to need a police officer there to <laughs> control the the crowd so we'll Very see because okay. many people care about it when something big happens and then the interest unfortunately yeah. wanes until it happens again you know what are we going to okay. do all so, right we're at the end ladies and gentlemen motion. motion to adjourn so moved second I'll second all those in favor all right thank you for joining Aye. us the preceding program is brought to you in part through a grant from the town of North Haven. Watch town meetings or other videos on demand at NHTV.com.